flowers were totally dry. I couldn't believe that. You know, and they tried to cover it up and say, oh no, there's nothing wrong with the pumps. And we know um, that that is absolutely not the case. Joburg water eventually got burned, that the pumps were fantastically fine. And it is due to poor planning. We are in the worst drought since 1992. And we need to have a plan B. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. Not only about how to reuse water, but to make the water that we are going to be using of high quality. Because the water that we've got at the moment is very, very, very debatable. And there's a doctor, Anthony um, Turton, who is a water expert, and he has explained and likened this process that's happening in the water now with, if you put just a little one drop of oil in a large volume of water, you're going to affect the whole volume of water. And likewise, you have just a tiny bit of sewage and it affects everything. And we are having partially treated sewage in our water. And this toxin that it has now created um, is compared to a chemical substance that is found in cobra venom. And there are only two types of technologies that can treat this in the world in such large um, water plants, and we do not have them here in South Africa. So we need to get to the point where we actually empower ourselves in our own home, in our own garden, in our own space, at work, anywhere that we are, that we are inhabiting. Our mayor of Johannesburg has now pleaded for people to stop watering gardens and start becoming more water wise. Drill a borehole, he says, in your garden. I mean, how many people can do that? But what we can certainly do is look at recycling. And today you have got the honor of listening to what we call at home, the water wizard. Alasha Lenov has had this passion of waters ever since I met him 11 years ago. And he's really an eco fundi. And he's been traveling the world, going on various workshops and courses. One of them was with John Todd, where he has learned amazing concepts of how to treat highly toxic and radiated water. And along with that, the construction of permaculture and website, uh, excuse me, wetland designs. And then he went to Mexico for a portion of his time where he was studying earthships. And under the guidance of Mike Reynolds there, he was learning how to actually incorporate wetlands into your home building, not outside, but actually inside which is really something phenomenal and, and that we have yet to see the true impact of that here in South Africa. And then last and not least is one of his uh, recent accomplishments is the permaculture design. Um, and that he studied through the Australian um, Jeff Lawton. So he's got a lot under his belt. He's continuing all of his studies with um, water and permaculture. He's got seven wetlands that he's done in the past seven years um, in the garden route here in Johannesburg and he's busy on an amazing project in our home garden at the moment so if you would please welcome him and he can tell you a little bit more about it here's Alasha So I'm going to just share my story of what I'm doing in my garden. Um, I made this really simple wetland in a thousand liter container, those chemical drums. And um, it cost me under 2000 Rand and took me one afternoon. And that little wetland treats 10,000 liters of water a month. It's taking all our shower, all our shower and bath water straight through this 1.2 meter container and it enters at one side and it exits on another side, overflows 
and that overflows and that water is clean enough to irrigate vegetables and herbs and whatever else you have but a good enough for veg so it's good enough pretty much for anything we are using more natural shampoos um, however the wetland can treat a lot more than just natural shampoos and I'll go into it just now so <clears throat> the mini wetland was done for under 2000 rand 1.2 square meters and really a miracle to, to do um, today <laughs> we were actually digging a trench um, on Conta line because a fact of water is that water travels 90 degrees to Conta line that's what it does and um, so on Conta line we dug a trench where we're going to be <clears throat> dropping all the kitchen water with its bits and pieces and washing machine as well and that's going to go into this trench which is going to be filled with mulch and uh, sticks and mulch so the water can infiltrate to the garden below that so you plant your vegetable garden low on a lower slope from that and um, so we've been digging that today um, because you cannot put the kitchen water into the gray water wetland especially of that small size it'll just block it up especially all the pieces um, and we, I'm busy doing a now eight meter diameter, 25 meters long pool conversion wetland, which is going to basically turn my pool into a drinking water reservoir, which is currently 100,000 liters, and um, it's we're pumping copious amounts of chlorine just to stay for, and you know stay stay to keep it clean. I we used to put as little as possible until the water started to smell because of the whole pH balance and and so on. And I have seen a few wet, a few pools converted, and really, it's a miracle. Dragonflies come in, frogs come in. Um, you can put. I wouldn't advise putting fish, but you can. But fish is, um, fish will put out more nutrients through their feces, and that will just you know you'll need more plants to clean that, so I'll keep the fish separate. Um, but the most amazing thing is that through a few charcoal filters, you can then take that water in the pool and actually plummet straight to your house with a six meter t tank. So we're doing all of that in our garden. Um, I'm also digging a, bi uh, I've done a wetland for biogas digester, which is all in the process, it's ready. Um, so it's dug and um, when we install the biogas digester, then the overflow of sewerage will go, so the gas will go straight to the kitchen, which has got a gas stove and um, the overflow will go through in the wetland and then uh, that water will be fine also to irrigate your garden and lawn and even vegetables because the wetlands suck up the nutrients. The plants suck up the nutrients, and that's what actually smells um, in the water. So I'll be explaining to you just now. Um, and then, of course, I'm doing um, one more important thing. I'm catching water from the road. So where you've got the curb outside on your pavement, you, you smash it in a bit, <laughs> and then you let that water come in, and you dig a few pits. And then um, also trenches on contour line, and you make a, the, the soil that you dig out of, of trench. So if the slope is going there, you would dig out a trench that way and then the, the soil that you take out, you put it just down slope after the trench. So when the water comes in from the road, it drops into the trench. The trench is filled with big logs so the water can stay there and then it infiltrates through the garden. So one of the most simplest thing you can do is store the water in the ground. So you don't need huge Jojo tanks for that. It just, your garden becomes moist and you do them every, no, it depends on the gradient, but um, every so often you put a, a little trench and then your whole garden becomes a, a juicy landscape. Um, so I've been posting these videos that I've been doing for free on my website, which I'll give you, it's um, alosha.co, A-L-O-S-H-A.co. So there's a lot of free videos on, on um, upcycling of your water. And, <clears throat> and I've asked uh, the database and I've emailed and I've asked the people to share what are the top two questions that they have with grey water recycling and, and water in general. So people want to know, so I'm going to give you some answers of these 13 key questions. <clears throat> so what is grey water? Well, grey water is your bath and your shower water. I'd consider kitchen water with all the bits and pieces as to go to sewage rather. Um, but your bath and shower water definitely um, is, is what grey water is. Um, storage, we generally don't store grey water, <clears throat> um, yes it stores in the tank that the plants are in but overflow from that a little submersible pump or bucket, you do use your grey water as you go. 
So after five, six days, you want to have that water drained and then more water overflows from your wetland. Um, but in essence, we don't store grey water. It does start to smell after a while. Um, but in the tank that it is, it is fine because the plants are doing all the treatment. Um, smell and why? Well, it's nutrients in the water that cause the smell and plants suck up the nutrients. So plants don't see it as Pantene Privy shampoo or whatever. They, 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 they see that as nutrients and they break it down in chemical compounds and they just suck it up through the roots. And if I show you pictures of my wetland, you'll see it's one of the most luscious thing in this desert, in this um, drought that we're experiencing. Everything is dying and drying in this wetland. It's just this huge, huge arum lilies and, and elephant ear plants and so on. So they're really loving it. Um, what can it process? Um, well, <laughs> when I went to America uh, to study in Earthships, I was surprised to see that they're using stock standard shampoos and sunlight liquid or the likes. Um, it is fine. A wetland from here to the speaker can take um, about eight meters long, can take pretty much most of the mild chemicals. You cannot put bleach, you cannot put jig down or drain cleaners. It will um, kill the bacteria and all the micro life in, uh, in, in, in around the gravel that you, you construct the wetland in. So, so no harsh chemicals such as jig and uh, bleach. Um, otherwise your soaps and shampoo is fine. You don't need anything special for that. Um, maintenance. Um, the only maintenance there is is the, the sieve that catches, the, well I use the piece of stocking, <laughs> the stocking that's at the end of the 50 mil diameter pipe just to catch the hairs and the dead skins or um, if your child threw something down the drain, just to catch that because you don't want eventually to block that up. So once every six months or a year, you would just empty that stocking out and replace it back or you throw it and put another one. That's it. Plants, the, the longer they go, the, the more flourishing they become. So they don't really need any maintenance at all. So it's pretty easy going. Um, how can you send water to the garden? Well, to start off, if your garden is downslope from your wetland, that's bonus because the water flows down. So gravity fed is the easiest way. Um, alternatively, you can buy a little submersible pump and you, know, you can irrigate from there. You can get a 12 volt without a battery. So as the sun hits the panel, it comes on, and you can irrigate from there, or you can have a little battery so you can irrigate in the evenings and so on. Um, can you irrigate straight without the wetland? Yes, you can. Your trees, your, your all your fruit trees and your normal trees, your, yeah, trees are safely can be irrigated straight from your grey water. Um, I know the plants, some plants are sensitive to soaps and phosphates, and that's why we use the wetland. But fruit trees, they'll love it. Um, banana trees, they'll love it. Or pawpaws, absolutely. But any trees will love your grey water, actually. Um, space limitations, well, as I said, 1.2 square meters is not a lot of space. Um, yeah. The stage is actually uh, one meter, so it's from, from the end here to here. It's really a tiny space that you need to install this. Um, uh, you can do it in a rental property. If you've got a second floor, you can run the water from top into this drum with very simple cuts and you know elbow and off it goes into your wetland with that stocking and, and so on. And then when you leave your rental property, you cut again and then you put the coupling joins the two 50 millimeter pipes together so you can do it in a rental property without doing any alterations that can't be fixed in minutes so you can just take this little wetland with you wherever you go <coughs> as expensive um no I, I wouldn't say in comparison to the prices of water that they can hike up if the drought should continue i'm estimating an average family will be paying a five thousand rand per month for water if the drought continues there is no water. If there's no water, there's scarcity. If there's high demand, you know what happens with high demand. Um, how much water will it save? Um, well, 10,000 to 15,000 liters of water. So 10,000 liters, it's a one bath and one shower a day. So it's quite substantial that you can use straight on your garden.
So instead of using 25,000 liters of water on your garden and your bathing, you're using just your bath water and that'll be plenty to irrigate your entire garden. Where do you start? Um, well, <laughs> you start at the exit of the wall and then you plan where it goes, you know. So there was some paper and um, you must have a gradient. Obviously water likes to flow down it doesn't like any kinks. So just if you let it flow, just let it flow. Don't, don't have an elbow that goes up and down because all the bits and whatever can get stuck in that elbow. Um, mosquitoes and dangers of mosquitoes. The wetlands that I'm talking about are completely covered with soil. So it's gravel, then it's a layer of sand, and then it's soil. So the water is just in the gravel. There is no mosquitoes breeding at all. It all happens under the soil. And then the soil is what you plant in. And the beautiful thing about that is every time you flush your bath, you, 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 you plug, uh, open the plug, it drain, the, the floods a bit. So now I'm using the same wetland as, to propagate cactuses and all the other little things that you constantly need to water, like three times a day, which we always forget because we're quite busy working. And so I'm actually using the wetland as a propagation device as well. So I'm testing it out. And so far in about three weeks, no, one, no plants have died where I've planted those cacti in the, in, the, in, in the bed outside and forgot to water it and all shriveled down completely. <clears throat> And that's a succulent so the, you know for everything else they need a lot more water and more, a lot more often so um yeah then i'd like to share with you a workshop that i'm doing on 12th of december and they will be showing how to construct this micro wetland from start to finish we'll actually complete it in one day we i'll show you the work in progress on the large scale wetland for the pool which is already dug, so it just needs lining, and, and that's the one that's going to turn my pool into a drinking water reservoir. I'll ex be explaining the gradients and how we'll actually plumb one of the kitchen exits and show you the gradient flow, and also tricky exits, because sometimes your exit is below the ground. What do you do, especially in the rental property? So there is a thing called siphon pump. Mm, you don't get it in South Africa, but it's a well-known thing overseas. But it's a little pump that... <laughs> acts like that so when you need to siphon petrol out of the tank so it's a little pump that gets the thing started so you've got your bath it's very low but your wetland must be lower and then you can siphon it out and then you let it drain out without any plumbing or any alterations and your 200 liters goes into this wetland so hopefully by the workshop that little pump will be here just a little 200 rand i just got it from bid or buy um it's called siphon pump uh, automotive industry yeah um, I'll be showing plumbing of grain water and yeah um, what plants to use so we'll be showing you different plants um, and what works well and there's certain plants that can take salts out of water there's certain plants that can take radiation out of water like pangai um, yeah, so we'll be explaining different plants and so on. But don't be scared if you go and get a few water plants to get started. Just put them all together and it will work out. How, <clears throat> showing exact, we'll be showing how to catch kitchen water um, with this little trench that I was explaining. Um, we'll be, I'll, I've also constructed a food growing machine which has got a, this two meter diameter uh, from a Jojo tank half a meter high and then the water goes through that and then it's a thousand liter drum and it grows 200 vegetables on two square meters using gray water and it irrigates itself and it uses kitchen waste so it's got a compost chute that you throw compost in and earthworms so it's got an earthworm farm in a center so you've got organic food that's using gray water and i've constructed one of those so i'll be showing you the ins and outs of how to create one of those guys yourself and all, all, all of the above will be videoed so for home study, study course. So should you not be able to attend physically, we'll have a set of videos that will go after each other and explain to you step by step on how to, how to create this. Um, yeah, so take your life and God's given resources in your own hands. And um, one last thing I'd like to share from Mike Reynolds is if you were given a choice of two cars, one of them ran on gasoline and another one ran on air, which one would you choose? <laughs> so, yeah.
Thank you very much. Namaste. Um, we'll be passing around um, database if you want to receive my free videos. Um, please record your email on there. And um, and the workshop is on 12th of December. And I've got business cards if anybody is interested to chat or. Uh, it's happening in Johannesburg North, uh, close to Four Ways, five minutes from Four Ways Mall. In our, in, our, in our house, in our garden. Are you going to do other courses? Yeah, yeah, we'll be doing courses in the future. So if you put your uh, email there, we'll definitely let you know. But there's no spamming. We'll just be, I'll be sending you every two weeks a, a, a video on eco DIY and organic gardening. But it's stuff that I figured out myself. Yeah, any more questions?